In this video, we are going to cover all the helicopter flight controls, and by the end of it, you'll know exactly what control does what. That's like autopilot, dude. How do you fly a helicopter? Well, I'm going to show you. We are going to break this video down into four parts, the cyclic, the collective, the throttle and correlator, and the pedals. All of the helicopter flight controls are really important, but the cyclic is probably the most important and it has the most complexness to it. When you look inside the helicopter, the cyclic is the main joystick looking control. And if you're in a Robinson, it's on a T-bar in the middle in between both pilots and on mostly every other helicopter, it's right in between the pilot's legs. As a general statement, what the cyclic does is it controls the tilt of the main rotor disc. So I've got my helicopter here and when the blade spins it acts like a disc kind of like a dinner plate If I push forward on the cyclic the disc the forward part of the disc is going to tip down the back side is going to come up And we're going to tilt forward if we go to the right if I spin the disc if I push right cyclic The disc is going to tilt to the right and we're going to go right if I push left cyclic The disc is going to tilt lift left and we're going to go left and the same thing with aft cyclic will go reverse So that's truly it. It just tilts the way the disc moves the hardest part with the cyclic is it's just so sensitive every small movement you make has a major impact on the huge disc and it can really change the lift and the thrust vector. On the cyclic control you typically have the push to talk button and it kind of looks like a trigger. What that does is that keys the microphone so that you can talk to air traffic control or whatever radio frequency you're talking on. It typically looks like a trigger or sometimes it's just a physical button but that keys the mic. A lot of people think that when you're just talking air traffic control can hear everything all the conversations in the helicopter. They cannot. They can only hear you when you key that mic that's typically found on the cyclic. The next control is the collective. Now what the collective does is it changes the pitch of the main rotor blades. If you increase the collective by pulling it up, what that does is this takes your main rotor blades and increases their pitch. When you increase the pitch of the main rotor blade, you're going to make more lift and the helicopter is going to go up. Conversely, when you lower the collective, you decrease the pitch. You're not making as much lift now and the helicopter descends. And the reason the collective is called the collective is because it collectively increases the pitch of all the main rotor blades at the the same time the collective is definitely the easiest control to understand the next control which is the throttle and the correlator go hand in hand with the collective and you can't really think of one without the other so we'll start with the throttle which is at the end of the collective and it works like a twist grip on a motorcycle on a motorcycle when you increase or roll on the throttle it makes the engine work harder it's the same principle on the throttle if you increase throttle the engine's gonna spin faster and make more power if you decrease throttle the engine's gonna spool down and not make as much power. Now on most helicopters, the throttle is primarily only used during startup and shutdown. You will actually manipulate the throttle, but during the vast majority of flight regimes, you will not be touching that throttle at all. So to talk about the correlator, we need to understand a little bit of the background. On older helicopters that did not have a correlator, what you had to do was a little bit more manual. So when you increase collective, you're making more pitch and you're going to increase lift. But when you increase pitch, you're also making more drag, which is going to cause the main rotor system to slow down as there's more drag. So what you have to do in helicopters that did not have a correlator is as you increase pitch, you had to roll on the throttle so that the engine would work harder and you would maintain rotor RPM. It was the same thing when you lower the collective when you decrease pitch you're decreasing the drag so now you don't need as much engine power and you have to roll back the throttle and it wasn't only with collective inputs it was also with pedal inputs and this made flying helicopters even more challenging so what the correlator does and i'm calling it the correlator it is called multiple different systems in different helicopters but it correlates the inputs from the collective to the engine so when you go to increase collective it automatically is going to cause the engine to work harder and spool up when you lower collective it's going to cause the engine to spool down and work less hard. So this makes flying helicopters significantly easier. It's important to note that the throttle can always override the correlator. So if you need more engine power and the correlator for some reason is not doing enough, you can always roll on the throttle and get more engine power as it's going to override it. And just the opposite, if you need to decrease engine power, you can roll off the throttle, causing the engine to spool down and override that correlator. Now the final flight control in the helicopter are the pedals. Now the pedals are just what the pilot pushes, but what they're 
doing is they are changing the pitch of the tail rotor blades. Now I shortened it to pedals, but they are technically the anti-torque pedals. And what they do is they change the pitch on the anti-torque rotor in the back of the helicopter. Now the purpose of the anti-torque rotor in the back of the helicopter is to counter the torque of the main rotor when these blades are spinning in one direction, that's gonna cause torque. So you have to counter that with the anti-torque and you can physically make inputs on the pedals to cause the nose to change pitch. And when you press on the pedals, that changes the pitch of the tail rotor blade and causes a yaw. So in the Robinson example, when you push left pedal, your nose will yaw to the left. When you push right pedal, the nose will yaw to the right. It's also important to note that the left pedal in the Robinson example is your anti-torque pedal. So what that means is when you push left pedal, you're increasing the pitch and you're gonna require more power from the engine to cause that nose left yaw. When you press right pedal, you're taking the pitch out of the tail rotor and your nose will start to yaw to the right. And quickly going back to that correlator, when you push that left pedal and you're requiring more engine power, the correlator is automatically gonna spool up the engine so that you can maintain rotor RPMs. Like I said, when you, in older helicopters, if you were to push the left pedal in this example, your engine would spool down because you're requiring more power to cause that anti-torque motion. If you didn't have the correlator, when you push the right pedal, your RPMs would spike up as you're taking the pitch and taking the drag out of the tail rotor. So in a couple different helicopters, there's other controls that do additional things, but in the vast majority of helicopters, these four controls make all the inputs and they all work in relatively the same way. If you're getting ready for your check ride, I've created a check ride prep course. Go check that out down below. That helps you go through your check ride, all the study prep, all the information you need before your check ride. So check that out down below. If you found yourself enjoying this video, smash the like button. I will see you on the next one. Take care.